Delete it. TikTok bad. There. I said it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. I realize I'm the first one to say this. Oh, oh, thank you so much. You really didn't have to. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I don't really mind short form content in general. I think there are loads of creators who make amazing short form content. <coughs> However, the problem is finding these creators because videos are simply thrown at you. Short formed apps are not designed around browsing, making it very difficult to find specific content. You're a slave to the algorithm. This is literally 1984. And even once you do find those great creators, <coughs> you're still going to be shown so much random BS that you didn't ask for just because that's how these apps operate. Recreating iconic memes, part one. The lol face. <laughs> I think you get the idea. Recently, we've seen the trend of Family Guy clips mixed with some random mobile gameplay going viral on TikTok. It's exactly what it looks like. This is called the Family Guy Pipeline. Hey Lois, I'm the current TikTok meta. This video in particular was absolutely min-max to capture your attention. You have three options for what to look at. You have the amazing commentary of Family Guy to listen to, and you even have some replay value maybe? Maybe you were too distracted by the guy playing with Play-Doh to watch the amazing Subway Surfers gameplay. I do think the popularity of this type of content is alarming. There is no meaningful substance here in any way. This is simply content for the sake of content made to be as stimulating as possible so you keep watching despite your short attention span. Which is also why I'm inserting a random meme right now. And the worst part is, we have to get used to this. I think. I mean, how in the world do we stop this? Do we just ban Family Guy clips from TikTok? Do we ban mobile gaming gameplay? Will Family Guy get canceled? Hey Lois, I'm deplatformed. <laughs> Don't worry, this is just the current trend. Eventually, it'll fade away and be replaced with something much worse. The only way these trends end forever is if this media consumption becomes illegal or... something. I, I don't know, I'm not the idea guy here. But... I am the YouTube guy. And I just want to thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. This channel started as a post channel where I would upload anything and everything just for the fun of it. Watch this. Yup! You are going to fear me. And to think that one day I would actually take this channel seriously and reach 100,000 subscribers is insane to me. Thank you all so much. Anyway, uh, wait. What was I talking about again? Obviously, the Family Guy pipeline isn't the worst thing to come out of TikTok. Well, the worst things are probably all of the dangerous challenges we've seen over the years that has kids doing all kinds of dumb. Remember the challenge where people would suffocate their friends and that was it? Or how about the Skull Breaker challenge? Yeah. Let's go back to that, please. The reality is most trends, good or bad, are coming out of TikTok nowadays. It's the most downloaded app of all time. Whether it's the coronavirus challenge, the gay son or thought daughter question, or the worst dance moves you've seen, odds are it most likely started on TikTok. This app is also incredibly influential in shaping the minds of today's youth, which makes the controversial rise of people like Andrew Tate all the more alarming. I'm assuming you already know who Andrew Tate is. He is the most popular example of toxic masculinity. He pushes his harmful misogynistic agenda Agenda, among other things, while trying to convince people he's not doing anything wrong and that he's right about everything. He does this despite the loads of allegations against him, many people being outspoken against him, getting deep platforms, having an active investigation against him, and oh look, he's in jail. And oh look, his biggest online copycats and boyfriends are also getting in trouble. Remember when this video was about Family Guy? That pipeline ain't looking so bad in comparison. Hey Lois, I'm the lesser of the two evils. But yeah, TikTok loved this guy. Andrew would spout an ungodly amount of of BS. You could find edits of him with this filter on, this music in the background of him talking about almost anything and people would eat up whatever he says. I hear people refer to these as Sigma edits. The only water I drink is sparkling water because sparkling water is for rich people. And I'll tell you why. You can get non-carbonated water, still water, from the f***ing tap. Why does he say water so freaking weird? The only water I drink. Water. The government gives you that sh effectively for free. But I don't like sparkling. You don't like sparkling water? You don't like water? Yeah, but the bubbles! The bubbles? If I see a man, if you ever meet a man who's afraid of sparkling water, know this. He's certainly afraid of combat. 
<laughs> He's certainly afraid of getting punched in the mouth. I, do, I personally don't like sparkling water. It's not because there's bubbles in there. It's because the taste is worse than regular water. So if you're sitting there at a table and your friend won't drink sparkling water, he's not your friend. Because when <laughs> it hits the fan and you get jumped and you're getting stabbed <laughs> by 10 randoms, he ain't jumping in front of knives to save your ass like a good friend should if he's scared of bubbles in his water. If you ever see someone who can't eat dairy, who is lactose intolerant, just know they're afraid to go to war because they can't eat cheese. Anyone who drinks still water is excommunicated permanently. Okay, but seriously, that looks like it's supposed to be a direct parody of Andrew Tate, but no, that's real. That's the type of crap this guy would say and the type of crap that people would take as gospel. Albeit, this is probably one of the least harmful things he's said given how goofy it is. If you somehow agree with his take and you go along with that and cut out everyone in your life who doesn't like carbonated water, then okay, that's fine. But one day, let's say you don't like pineapple on pizza, and then someone else who is a bigger Sigma male than you realizes that anyone who doesn't like pineapple on pizza is a weak bitch, and now you're cut out from his life. You're not allowed to complain. I am convinced that people will believe anything you say as long as you sound confident, have this filter on, and this music in the background. So, is it true that you made a million dollars last year? Multi-millions. Multi? Wow, what's the secret to your success? I multitask every second of the day. I shit my pants before I even get out of bed in the morning, just to save time. What? Sometimes I shit my pants before I even wake up. So... I poop my own pants while walking to the bathroom, so once I get in there, I just eject and flush. Do you clean? The average person spends 73 hours a year pooping, and by eliminating that time, I am giving myself so much more time to work on my business. I take control over my turds so they come out on my turn. What, what about peeing? Oh, I don't pee. And one of the saddest parts about these videos is that not Andrew Tate nor anyone on his team actually makes these videos. People will find these lines from Andrew Tate and then make them on their own to give views and money of their own. Meanwhile, Tate gets more exposure. It's a win-win. Except for society. Also, many of these people put referral links to Tate's online course in their bios, giving them a little commission if people sign up with that link. Making this even more of a win-win for both parties. A lot of people also refer to this trend as the alt-right side of TikTok. It's basically the the same crap that we've been looking at with more people, more creators. Like Logan Paul, Ben Shapiro, and Walter freaking White. There's a lot of Walter White clips in this style. The original context to these clips do not matter at all. If a male says something confidently, or controversial, or flexes about their wealth, or is Walter White, just add this music, just add this filter, and people will flock to it, idolize the clip, idolize the person maybe. How does a busy guy like you stay in shape? I eat babies. And I feel like this is growing bigger and bigger all thanks to TikTok. Or maybe it's just more in my face now because of TikTok, because I know this type of genre and ideology has always existed. Like TikTok and YouTube shorts will just recommend me these edits with no prior context. They just think this is what I want. No, I want the Family Guy pipeline, thank you very much. Anyway, I feel like we don't get many of these edits about Trump and he's like the perfect candidate for these type of edits. So I did the world a favor and made the ultimate Sigma Trump edit just for you guys. If Tate doesn't win, your second amendment is gonna be in trouble. Big trouble. Remember that. O'Rourke voted against the border wall. Oh, that's a good thing. He voted against Kate's law, and he voted for Obama. So there is a bit of good that has come out of this new Sigma trend. We now have Argon by Sigma who makes ironic Sigma content and then makes this face at the end. <laughs> I really don't have much to say about him, it is what it is. But I just find him really funny and I really wish I could make this face. Th there was just no way I was going to make a video on this topic and not at least include him for a second. But now your second's over, get the hell out of here. I just want to quickly say, while I was getting footage for this video, I found Sigma edits for things that I never would have guessed. Like Kung Fu Panda, The Boondocks, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Mr. Bean. I found multiple Mr. Bean Sigma edits. I think the absolute worst one I found was the Sigma edit of this clip where the dolphin is violating the girl. I'm not sure how to put it, but I think we've all seen the clip. So anyway, are we really adding these guys nodding after that clip? Do these people have any idea what that implies? Anyway, here's my SpongeBob Sigma edits. Hey you! Whippy, whippy, whippy. Oh, I'm a little peanut worm. Are you too much of a whip to work out? Are you a weakling built like a sponge? Well, now you too can have muscles. Mm -hmm. With anchor arms! They slip on like a glove! Just that air! 
How big do you want them? Normal? Baby? And for the ladies? Harry! I was a whip before anchor arms! Now I'm a jerk and everybody loves me! Anyway, with Tate in jail, hopefully this whole Sigma trend will start to die down. But it's still going strong at the moment, with the most recent example being the Carl effect. I'm assuming everyone who's watching this video right now knows who Mr. Beast is. Chris is a well-known member of the Mr. Beast crew, as he's been around since the start of the channel. Then there's Carl. He's been around for a bit now, but is still one of the newest lead Mr. Beast members. Some people online seem to have some random vendetta against Carl for one reason or another. None of it's Carl's fault in the slightest. You've gotten some people saying that you have ruined ruined Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of that one. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, yeah. That one's funny to me. I was laughing about this with Jimmy the other day. Like, they think it's like a conspiracy. Carl was brought on to Mr. Beast to make it more child-friendly. I could be definitely polarizing. Like, I'm loud sometimes. You know what I mean? I get if you don't like how I act, that, that's fair, whatever. People just don't seem to like him, and I really think it is as simple as that. Going back to Chris the meme god. Recently, people have been making fun of Chris's appearance as he started to dress differently, paint his nails, and grow out his hair. As a result, people are blaming Carl. So let me get this straight. Chris now dresses similarly to Carl paints his nails like Carl already does, and has longer hair like Carl, and... Carl's the sole reason behind this. He is the one who changed Chris. Chris is leaving his wife for Carl. Or at least that's what people are saying. So first of all, that's just not how it works. Why would it work like that? Second of all, Chris isn't really changing. It seems to be that he's embracing himself more than ever. Let me be clear, nothing about him has changed to the audience aside from his physical appearance. He acts the same way he always has. He's talked about how he struggled with his gender identity, is bisexual, and has stated that he's been taking his mental health seriously. But don't tell that to TikTok, that context doesn't matter, this is Carl's fault. Obviously there's nothing wrong with what Chris is doing, I fully support him. So even if Carl somehow made Chris change, it's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, I'll put myself out there in support of Chris. Here's a couple pictures of me back in 2012. This fit was just for fun one time, but since then I've painted my nails. And honestly, if I dressed myself up more, I wouldn't mind rocking a similar style to Chris or Carl. Let's be real, God made me bald and bearded because I'd be too powerful powerful as a femboy. That's just the truth. Anyway, thanks to this whack reception of Chris's new appearance, we have these Sigma edits shaming Chris and Carl and praising Chandler because his physical appearance hasn't changed. Yes, let's praise the guy who has his own NFT brand because he didn't fall for the Carl effect. And let's shame the guy for changing his physical appearance because he's different than I am and I am scared of change. I found out about the Carl effect through a Jake the Viking TikTok where Jake is reminiscing on his time with Mr. Beast. Or nostalgia baiting, whatever you want to call it. But in the comment section, I saw people talking about the Carl effect. One comment in particular Jake left a like on. I'm not sure if Jake the Viking fully understood understands what the Carl effect means, but whatever. Go off, Mr. Raid Shadow Legends spokesman. Cooler than a snail. Shout out Being cooler than a snail. Lit, man. In chat, no, you're Carl ruin Chris. Dude, I can't take it anymore. You're next, bro. You you're next. Look out for that did. cooler I than a snail, you're next. Did. And on a similar subject, I found a lot of Sigma edits of old Mr. Beast videos where Mr. Beast tells edgy jokes. This is incredibly odd to me because usually when old edgy stuff re-emerges from a popular creator, they're usually shamed for it. But instead, Mr. Beast is getting praised. In my opinion, none of these edgy jokes are super bad or anything, but TikTokers are gonna take these and just run with it. I feel like these people are like, oh ho ho, Mr. Advertiser, Friendly Philanthropist, Millionaire, massive YouTuber isn't perfect after all. In fact, he used to be like one of us. Racist. Again, I'm not saying this type of content or ideology wasn't present before TikTok. However, it's becoming a greater problem because of TikTok. We weren't getting Sigma male edits back on Vine, now were we? Instead, we were getting that backflip, though. But this is where we are now. An impressionable audience is being radicalized to follow the toxic Sigma male alt-right grind set. It's actually kind of scary to talk about this online because people are taking anything they want out of context, adding music behind it and adding this filter over it and having a field day with it. Uh, Chris, I was thinking about robbing a store. You can't do that, you get shot, dude. Oh ho ho, Mr. Advertiser, Friendly Philanthropist, Millionaire, Massive YouTuber isn't perfect after all. In fact, he used to be like one of us. Racist. 